All right, guys, I guess we're doing this by popular demand. Popping corks. Yeah, we talk about it all the time on the podcast. The guys give me a really hard time. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, for as many decades as I've been fishing, uh, and I love to fish with uh, every artificial. I never really fish with bait. But uh, I, I, I went out today and caught everything on top water. But popping corks, I like to tell people, my kids uh, always uh, give me a hard time. I said, all right, let's wake them up. That means uh, I'm gonna put the popping cork on. Popping cork is truly one of the best rigs uh, that you'll ever use out there, but uh, with artificials. And I'm gonna show you a couple of little things that I do uh, with my popping corks and how I work it, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, hopefully it'll help a little bit. It's just my opinion, it's how I do it. Uh, but I'll start with this. Uh, when, after I, start, I decide to wake them up, uh, I start using the popping cork. My regular rig, probably 60-70% of the time, maybe even more, is uh, a regular popping cork. Uh, I like the Paradise Popper, unpaid endorsement, it's just what I use. got a good uh, weight on it, it's got a great uh, body, and uh, it's very, very durable. I can fill this for a long time. Now, how I rig it is, uh, obviously, uh, just put a leader on it. I use a, a fluorocarbon leader on my uh, popping cork, by and large. I'll get to something else here in a second when I use uh, monofilament. Uh, but it's uh, it's about 30 inches long. It's very scientific uh, with the way I uh, measure it. I'm about six foot two uh, for those. I grab it and I go to about the middle of my chest. That's about 30 inches right there. Uh, I'm using right now a 1 ounce jig head. Uh, usually I'll use a 1 16th, get a nice little float down. Uh, when you pop it, it's very, as you, I'm sure you know, how to rig and how to pop and work a popping cork. Works in all environments, works on all fish. In fact, um, I think the biggest trout I've ever caught, the one that's uh, behind me when I'm uh, recording the podcast, a 30 inch trout, was on a popping cork. So take that, Captain Dean, Captain Scott, and uh, Captain Caleb. Now, there are other ways that I, uh, other things that I do when I'm using a popping cork. Um, now, I'll use the Four Horsemen, the bigger Four Horsemen, the one with a cup on the top, uh, the bigger one when the water's a little choppy. Now what I just showed you is just all things being equal, you're going out on a good day, uh, you're using your popping cork uh, and, and going from there. A little choppier, a little murkier, I'll use the bigger the bigger four horsemen. And then there's this, and a lot of people uh, would think this is nuts, but uh, I've caught a lot of flounder uh, with the smaller uh, four horsemen. Again, unpaid endorsement, but I'm willing to uh, talk turkey with these guys because I use this a lot when I'm fishing for flounder. Now you're going to be in about a foot, uh, maybe two feet of water, maybe less, uh, maybe eight inches or so. So I use only about a, I would say about a 20 inch. Uh, and this is fluorocarbon uh, because, uh, excuse me, this is uh, monofilament uh, because monofilament floats uh, a little better. And um, again, on this one, I have a 1 16th ounce uh, jig head on it. Um, but I actually, when I'm fishing for flounder, I would prefer maybe even a little lighter if you can find them, buy them online or whatever. Uh, and this is a great, the reason I use the cigar on uh, for flounder, if I'm in a flounder and, I cut, and somebody's caught some or I've caught some, um, you work it a little different than you would normally on a popping cork. You keep the rod down and just kind of, you know, just kind of pop it occasionally sideways. And what that does is as it's floating down real slowly, uh, the, the popping cork is almost always vertically. It'll pop a little bit like that, but it's almost always horizontal, I mean. And what and it makes you helps you see the bite a little better. You know, flounder have a finicky bite, and as it's floating, it's floating over grass, over shell. It kind of stays right above it if you're just sort of, as I mentioned, just kind of rigging it, you know, real slightly. Uh, believe it or not, um, it is uh, it's a great flounder rig, too. A lot of people don't do that. Uh, but I'll throw a popping cork when I'm fishing probably about 20% of the time. Um, I'm willing to take all the, the grief that anybody gives me because uh, it catches a whole mess of fish. One more thing on the flounder. Um, I use uh, the Curly, Dale, Curly Tail Gulp, also unpaid endorsement. <laughs> so I'm just telling you how I do it. White with a chartreuse tail. I tell everyone, you can use any color you want as long as it's white with a chartreuse tail. Uh, that's what works. Now popping corks uh, tend to last a little longer. You do t need to get uh, used to how to cast them. They're really easy with a spinning reel. I like to use a bait caster, and the way I cast them with a bait caster is maybe a little longer arm. Like if I'm fishing with a plastic or a topwater, I'm doing this, as I'm sure you all do. With uh, 
popping cork, I tend to get a little, it has that longer leader, it's a little longer bait. I tend to get a little longer with my arm and let it sail. And you can really cover a lot of water. And that's the last thing I'm going to say. The advantages and why I say I'm, I'm going to wake them up when I go with popping cork. That is, covers a lot of water. It does attract fish, as, as you well know, with the poppers. Uh, and uh, the last thing that it does is for people that are just getting into uh, artificials, it's a, a real kind of uh, affirmation uh, that the artificial will work. I've been using this for probably pushing 30, 35 years, and it's a go-to bait. It's a fantastic bait. So uh, give me all your grief you want. Uh, thanks to Shimano. Uh, thanks to uh, all you guys for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. We talk to you every, we record it every Tuesday. We post it every Tuesday night, or, and you can get to it Wednesday morning as well. And thanks for listening to the podcast.